What is going on everyone? It's your guy Cole Jackson back here on Road Graders Behind Enemy Lines today on the Russell Street Report brought to you today by DNL Tinting. Go check out dltinting.com for all the services they can provide to you. Uh, click the link down below to check it out and today we are going behind enemy lines into Bengal territory to check out the NFL debut from Amarius Mims, a guy that a lot of Ravens fans had on their list you know it's kind of funny we we end up picking roger brosengarten in the second round but had a ton of interest in amarius mims who ended up on the Bengals, and troy fotanu who ended up on the steelers so guys that obviously i looked at fotanu yesterday was zach frazier um but a couple of offensive tackles that ravens fans were interested in ending up in the division um so excited to check them out obviously you probably saw the news amarius mims got hurt he's expected out for four weeks uh, could be back for week one, week two type timeline. Um, that was Mims's big knock going into the draft was kind of those medicals. And uh, obviously he, I think he had tightrope surgery uh, in September of 2023. He ended up re-injuring his ankle in the SEC championship game and then got hurt at the combine running the 40. Um, so this is now his fourth injury since September 2023. And the last two, three times, sorry, we've seen him on a football field playing competitive football, being the SEC championship game, the combine, and his first NFL game hurting all three of them. So the durability is going to factor in. Um, but what we see on tape is actually quite solid. So I'm looking forward to jumping into it, taking a look. Um, let's get started. Um, so one thing to note, 43 here for the Bucks is a guy that we're going to see as a matchup um, quite a bit. That's Chris Braswell out of Alabama, fellow rookie. Again, another guy that was linked to the Ravens through the draft process. So just to kind of flag the competition he's seeing here, um, we can see a lot against Chris Braswell. Uh, so we're going to get started here. And, you know, pretty simple rep where this was kind of Mims's game, which was really solid. Just good movement skills um, for a guy his size, the good length. I find, find his hand positioning is a little late here. You see Braswell get up into his chest early, um, and you can see his hands basically on his uh, triceps here. Uh, but his ability to reset, just be a mammoth of a man, um, that you know gives him that margin for error with the length because you can't just run through his chest given just his his girth, his strength, that sort of thing. Um, reminds me a lot of Orlando Brown Jr. in that way. So um, you know, like, would like to see better hand positioning there, but just such a big physical guy that it doesn't really matter. Um, here we're going to see some good hand fighting from him as we get into another set. Um, so you can see that initial hand shoots and Braswell dodges it, but then, you know, the, the margin for error on the length. Um, but just his ability to kind of keep his feet moving here as he's kind of striking, independent hand usage, moving his hands. He basically ends up facing the back of the pocket. Um, this is really impressive movement skills for a guy his size, and this is why he was so highly tutored um, as a prospect. So just good movement skills there. That's really what I've come to expect with him um, is that he's going to be able to do that these types of things, and then you see that reach um just keeping guys off of his uh out of his chest as he kind of sets in there you can see the extension so playing with you know his length there um again would like to see more consistent hand placement but with him and the margin for error given his his size and his ability to refit and then use his length after the fact um it's a lot less relevant we're gonna get a couple plays here in the run game we're gonna see a nice little duo concept here so you can see the double teams are right here um, from both guard tackle duos. So you got a double there and a double there. And uh, I wasn't very impressed with his run blocking, and I'll be pretty clear why. Um, pad level too high and not very physical. So you're going to see him. His bit job here is basically to overtake from the guard. And as the guard tries to move up, he just doesn't really do anything here. It's kind of weird. Like he's, he's too high. He's leaning here. And then he gets banged out by the linebacker and kind of gets pushed out. So... Um, you know, this was kind of a consistent theme that I, that I saw anyway. Um, we're gonna, I think this is the trap concept. So he's going to be on the kickout block here against Braswell. Guy that he's a lot bigger, a lot stronger. Um, Chase Brown's coming to his side. I'd like to see him drive him and, and kind of really move him. Um, and so he's going to make good contact, but Braswell 
is able to kind of snatch him and get in there and get in on the he doesn't make a tackle but he's able to get in there and be able to be in position to make a play um so that kind of lack of physicality lack of drive poor hand placement here and he's able to just kind of get in there um so that's something that as we move on uh if he's doing that consistently it's going to cause a problem for the Bengals' run game um but just overall lack of physicality and lack of kind of that killer instinct and drive blocks is what i'm seeing um we're going to see a down block here on power right so they're going to pull that left guard in behind the guard tackle duo you see right there um and so again i want to see him you know bang down on that uh on that one tech and and just be able to drive him and you can see kind of pad levels overly high he's kind of stood up he's not really driving his feet at all like you can see him kind of right there and then he just kind of stops moving his feet and stands up um i found this pretty consistently throughout the run block clips so just again watch his feet kind of stop just really weird for a dude his size um and something that i think is going to give him a lot of trouble if he keeps doing this and then we got one last rep he only had 16 reps in this game um and he's basically just doing a kick out on braswell again and he just gets snatched um so again less relevant to the play but kind of consistent right his pad level's high he's not really moving his feet like i know his job on this play is really just to seal him out um but it's just it's weird how consistent it is um so just to kind of see that over and over again i thought was something to flag so um you know summing up mims in the past game thought he looked really solid like really good exactly what i would have expected from a first round draft pick um and something that i think is going to you know continue to get better so i think he's going to be a very good pass protecting right tackle but for a dude his size um which is a mammoth of a man i just want to see more in the run game you know i want to see that orlando brown jr kind of complete area for a right tackle because i mean i'm going to use that as a comparison because there's similar size um but just you know seeing that kind of killer instinct that drive that sort of thing um is something he's going to have to really develop as he gets better and obviously staying on the field um so thanks for tuning in go check out dealtinting.com for all they can provide to you and thank you for joining us today on the russell street report click that like button if you enjoyed this content hit subscribe if you're new here be good to yourselves be good to each other peace out